Hello and welcome back. Here's my breadboard UART it's designed to interface to my homebrew CPU and this has actually been working quite well but it does have some limitations. I've just got a one byte receive buffer here so if I go and send a single character it will be displayed on the LEDs here and I've got a latch up here that will store the one bit of information that there is data ready to be taken by the CPU and when it reads it back that gets reset. Got a similar issue on the transmit. We can send a byte, but to send back-to-back -back bytes, you actually have to just poll the, the busy status on it constantly. And that's not really a very good way of doing it because say, for example, on my prime numbers demo, I never achieve maximum output because I have a string of characters to output for a number, polling it to output the characters one at a time, and then I have to go off and do the calculation. It'd be way better if the data for any given number was queued up and was sending automatically while the computation for the next number was taking place. And that's why I built this. This is a 4-byte FIFO buffer, which was designed as a prototype to interface to the CPU. Then I designed a PCB for it, and I messed up the design. There's a couple of lines going from the counters to the demultiplexers that were messed up and that stopped it working right. But at the end of that video I did work out the problem, designed the fix and I ordered new PCBs which have now arrived. Let's go take a look at those. We have a puzzle of some kind. I may look into that. Okay, it's going to be pretty difficult to spot an actual difference here apart from I wrote version 1.1 on that. Let's hope I didn't mess this up again. Okay, well you've seen me solder one of these before, even though there's a subtle difference in the PCB. So I'm going to be doing heavy fast forward on this and get to the testing, but um, I think we can make it interesting because I've got to make up two of these. So let's have a race between Wednesday evening me and Thursday evening me. Okay, this is a pretty nice looking module actually. I'd be a lot happier if it works, especially since I've soldered two of them up. Right, so this is how it was set up when we were testing the previous one. 
So it's output enable tied to ground. There's a reset tied to this button. That's a ground line. That's data read. And that's data write. So we've got the bus lines here, hardwired to on, outputting data into the inputs. Any outputs coming to the LEDs. Okay, so the buffer's currently empty, so the first byte I write in should come straight out. That's good. So let's set the second LED. Write that. So it's gone up to two. This is counting correctly now. So that's at capacity, eight bytes. Okay, I just touched a wire and it disappeared. Let's do that again. Yeah, the reset line is flashing there, the loose wire. Okay, so now I'm going to read the bytes out. So the number of bytes in the buffer is going down and we're cycling through the data that we wrote in. That's good, that's working. Okay, I'm going to double click on one. No, this one's working, but these buttons are a little bit dodgy. Now, let's look at interfacing this back. So if that stays there, if this becomes the main bus, I need to cross-connect those. It would be better to do it here or there. Let's do it across here, and then I can use a shorter wire for this bit and use this longer wire elsewhere. Cross-connect the reset lines. Bring back the UART itself. Now we only need this board while we're testing, so the UART should end up just being this. Now we're treating this as the main bus. I've lost the switch this was connected to. Now at the moment this one is still hardwired to output and this one should be hardwired to output. I'm just going to hardwire the read and write lines on this. So this is going to be our read buffer. At the moment if I receive a character the lines are present on these output lines and they're displayed out here then this line driver is pushing them onto the bus and this here is the manifestation of the main bus. So actually this chip and these outputs and this chip are all redundant in the new design because the work these two chips is actually being done over here by the read FIFO. So that's the load line. Look at you, it's the bottom half of this 74LS00, which is the set reset latch to drive the status bit that says a byte is ready. So we'll only be using half of this chip as well. So it's these two chips and half of this chip that are, we're making redundant. I like that. So this line will pulse when we receive a byte. I'm going to go and stick that into the load line. Let's try this. Well, that apparently wasn't the load line. No, got those the wrong way around. Okay, so I've transmitted a character over the UART. We've got one byte in the buffer. And we've got the right, or sorry, the output is currently hardwired. So it's going to come straight out of there. So. I'm just selecting stuff in sequence there. 
Now, if I read it back out, oh, that's awesome. More importantly, at the moment, we're hardwiring the output to come onto the main bus, which is going to get pretty nasty when we start wiring other stuff up. So if we actually connect the output line to the assert, that'll be working more like we normally see. So I'm just going to output the from the serial terminal, the numbers one to eight. Yeah, it's the right pattern. There's the one, there's the two. That's awesome. Okay, so anything left to do for or receiving on the UART is we want to take these four bits of status and output that in the status register. I don't feel the need of doing that right now. I might move the status register down here. We got room for it. Almost, but not quite. Let's do a little bit of a reorganize here. Actually, I'm going to move these all the way to this side. Should be able to make some short little jumpers for that location later on. All of that so I could comfortably put this chip here. Okay, so got that back to working exactly as it was before. And now I'm going to take those four lines. So if number of bytes to read is put that in the bottom four bits. So receive a couple of bytes. And then assert the control word to the bus and fix it so it's the right way around. And there's uh, two bytes available. Okay, that's really cool because that's fully working now. I've kind of got the control word split between the two locations, but that means the read buffer is fully implemented and we just need to cross connect this up to here and we could operate the read fully buffered from the CPU. I just want to demonstrate something actually. Rather than pushing a single letter or number key on my keyboard, I'm going to push one of the arrow keys. And immediately we've gone straight away up to free. And that's because the arrow keys don't have a standard ASCII letter. So actually there is a control sequence. And so for the first time we could actually use that properly. In the SNEC game I actually just faked that by uh, just 
responding to the last byte in that free character control sequence. But uh, once this is all done, I'll actually have to fix that up to work properly. Right, I think that's far enough for today though. I'm not quite sure how long this video will end up, but to implement the right FIFO, I'm gonna to have to do a bunch of rework up here because rather than using the edge trigger circuit, we're actually gonna to have to be able to respond independently to the buffer not being empty. So that's gonna be an interesting circuit in its own right. So I hope you found this much interesting. I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.